So I, I recently read this article from John Kiriakou over on Consortium News, uh, another fantastic site that people should be signed up to uh, and, and getting their information from. Uh, but Consortium News, uh, you know, he, he talks about his time in prison in Consortium News. He brings up this article from The New York Times, which I'll get into in just a moment here. Uh, but he talks about his time in prison. If you don't know who John Kiriakou is, uh, he was a CIA whistleblower and he got uh, sent to prison because he's a whistleblower and that's what we do to whistleblowers in america we don't actually listen to them and uh and and send corporate criminals and war criminals uh into prison we we send the whistleblowers it's literally the kill the messenger policy uh that the united states has so he went to prison and he recounts some of the food that he had in prison right because uh the article that he read the article that was forwarded to him by a friend that he wrote about was about food in prison, about nutrition in prison. And he talks about some of the food, right? His first day he was, he was, he talked about how um, he, uh, uh, it was fish day. It was fish Friday or something along those lines. And somebody told him, Hey, don't eat the fish, just skip the fish. And when he got into line, he sees the, he sees the container and it says Alaskan cod product of China not meant for human consumption, um, feed use only, right? So it's, 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 I guess it's meant for like animal feed that they feed in, you know, to, to zoo animals or what have you, but they were giving that to prisoners. Then there's another instance that he brings up from the John Sewell's Food Incorporated. This company uh, gave dog meat, dog food, not dog meat, dog food. Uh, this would be a much darker story if it was dog meat, uh, but it was dog food, and they gave that as taco meat to the prisoners. And the investigate once this was found out, they did an investigation, and the company wasn't fined. They weren't reprimanded in any way. Uh, they were just given a fine. Right. They were given a three hundred and ninety two thousand dollar fine. And I mean, that sounds like a lot because most of us don't see that kind of money. Like most of us don't even see ten thousand uh, dollars, let alone three hundred and ninety two all at once. Right. <clears throat> so. That seems like a lot of money, but for a corporation like this, that's a slap on the wrist at best. Th these guys are probably making millions and millions of dollars. So a, a couple hundred thousand dollars is basically nothing and and really what they'll end up doing is taking it out on their workers anyway so <clears throat> the prisoners when they were talked to about this when they were like hey did you know that your your taco meat for taco tuesday is actually dog food and they basically said well we couldn't tell the difference they couldn't tell the difference from what they were normally served and uh and dog food that was posing as tacos. My cat is just being, uh, he's, he's, he's exploring the room, but he's also, I'm, I'm like mildly keeping an eye on him at the same time, because I'm sure he's going to get into some kind of trouble, uh, or, or not. Maybe he's just sunbathing, but anyway, um, back to this. And then John Kiriakou tells another story about how uh, he had to, him and, and another prisoner, this Iraqi prisoner, would forage for dandelions in the yard. And they would, you know, collect the dandelions and then they would make a salad out of them. And that was like the closest thing to a real salad that he would have uh, at the prison because the food was genuinely so bad, right? Like that's how bad the food was um, that him and this Iraqi a uh, prisoner would have to forage for this sort of food. I mean, this this is abhorrent conditions. This is conditions that no human being should be in. These these are these are conditions that the United States government often chastises. Uh, you know, other nations that have quote brutal dictators, and this is what they're doing to their citizens. Oh, they're starving them. They have to eat cat food. You know, they have to do this. They have to do that. Oh, it's so terrible. We have to go bomb this country. You, you know, it, it's conditions like this that are used to. Uh, curry favor uh, to, with people to to get them into believing that they need to go to war, right? That's that's kind of what um, 
what they use this sort of information for. But here we are. We're doing it in America. We're treating our prisoners this way. And a lot of people are okay with this. A lot of people look at this and they go, well, they're, they're, they're in prison. They must have done something terrible. Not really. N not, not something so terrible that it, um, that, that it demands that you, they, they eat dog food as taco meat, that they eat, you know, the same kind of, the same quality meat that you give to, you know, zoo animals, you know, they're, there what what level of humanity are you showing them what level of 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 kindness are you showing them you're 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 not you're not showing them any of that sort of stuff hang on where'd he go oh no he's fine uh but you know people kind of excuse this sort of stuff which is terrible uh if you want people to be reassimilated into society uh, and regain a certain sense of their humanity, then you have to treat them as such. You have to treat them as human beings. So the article in New York Times, I read the New York Times article as well, <clears throat> and the way they get away with this is that they claim that it's opinion. It's not, it's not news, right? Like revealing this sort of information is not really news. It's just a matter of opinion. Hold on, I'm going to let him out. Because he is, he's fussing by the door. Milo is fussing by the door. I got him. Bye, Miles. Sorry about that. I definitely didn't want my cat to become a prisoner of, <laughs> of my studio. Uh, but, you know, most of prison food, what they what they say is it's primarily uh, empty carbs. It's a whole lot of sugars and it's a whole lot of sodium. And it's got very little nutritional value. It's got very little nutritional value. So there's a warden in Maine. His name is uh, Randall Liberty. Uh, what a great name, right? Kind of sounds like it kind of sounds like a superhero name almost. Randall Liberty coming to HBO Max this fall uh but he started a, a composting program he came in and he saw how much food was being wasted away you know how much these prisoners aren't eating a lot of the meat because the meat is not good condition you know and and they're throwing it away so instead of throwing it away he was like let's just compost it let's just make soil out of it um and and then he started a garden in prison so these prisoners would would have a garden they can go to uh you know and they were taken care of like this dude was trying to make prison a place where they can regain their humanity and and figure out how to be, you know, functioning members of society. That's that's sort of and that's sort of the point of prison, right? The point of prison is to rehabilitate people that have broken laws in such a way uh, that they have to be, you know, taken out of society and and kind of relearn like, hey, this is why you did what you did. This is why it's wrong. We're not saying you as the person is wrong, but we are saying that your actions are wrong. And there's a way that you can do, you know, to, to improve it. But it's just become this way of making money, you know, uh, criminalizing black people, criminalizing brown people, uh, criminalizing a fucking plant. <laughs> because a lot of people that are in prison are in there for nonviolent drug offenses, specifically nonviolent marijuana offenses, um, which all of them should be pardoned. Their sentences should be uh, rescinded and they should go back out of prison and be a part of our society. But here's the reality. Good food is a human right. Good nutrition is is not something that we automatically know about. Good nutrition is is learned. It's practiced. Um, and, you know, in, in a lot of in a lot of ways outside prison, um, good nutrition is expensive. In a lot of ways, right? And, and but that's because good nutrition is valued so much. That's because capitalism likes to take advantage of this sort of shit. Uh, so, you know, even for me as somebody that obviously does not have to deal with the stresses of being in a prison, uh, a prison being in a condition where I'm in a four by four cell, uh, and so on and so forth. Even for someone like me, good nutrition is 
difficult to practice, right? Like I'm 32 and I'm just sort of figuring a lot of this stuff out of like, hey, I'm going to drink a protein shake in the morning with some fruits and some, you know, milk substitutes and stuff and like get my protein, get get some vitamins in for the day. I still have to take my vitamin supplements. Uh, how much coffee am I drinking throughout the day? You know, there was a point where I could drink six cups of coffee and be totally fine. Well, now I can drink maybe two, right? I'll drink two cups of coffee in a day and that'll be enough. And then later in the day, after I drink my protein shake, I can have a nice dinner with some vegetables and some meat and some grains and stuff in it. Then later at night, I can enjoy my snacks and, you know, put a, put put some chips and cookies and all that other stuff that we really like in there. But it's because I've had this um, this diet of 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 good nutritional foods. But in a lot of senses, finding decent vegetables, finding decent grains, finding a, a protein shake that isn't, you know, $35 a bag or whatever is hard to come by even, you know, and this is outside of prison. So how do you, how do you get around that is, well, you do what this random Liberty guy did. You let prisoners have a garden. You have a garden on the premises of the prisons. You don't feed them fucking dog food. I feel like that's, that's like a pretty easy one to follow <laughs> is you don't feed them fucking animal feed and dog food. Um, and you feed them like they're regular people. You you feed them like who they are. They're just regular fucking people. Uh, and and you let them have their dignity. Part of the reason why prisoners have a hard time reassimilating into society is because you put them in conditions so terrible that they have PTSD and can't reassimilate into society. Being in a room like this, it might be a little too much for them. You know, fight, going to a grocery store around so many people, uh oh, you know, their defenses go up because that's what they're used to. So if the conditions of prison don't aren't somewhat like the conditions of the outside world, then all you're doing is creating victims of trauma that are that are now going to, you know, kind of recede back to their original default, uh, default setting and default actions and can repeat the crime again commit recidivism and go back to prison to an environment that they're comfortable with an example of that is um shit what's his name from shawshank redemption the old man damn it i'm forgetting his name and it's very embarrassing because it's a really good movie and and uh the scene where he where he this is a very old movie if you haven't seen shawshank redemption this is a spoiler for shawshank redemption but he kills himself uh, because he doesn't know how to be a person outside of prison because he's been in prison since he was a 16 year old boy. And it's a super sad scene. And I can't I'm, I'm having such a fucking terrible time remembering his name. Uh, if you remember this character's name from Shawshank Redemption, leave a comment <laughs> because apparently my memory is shit. Uh, but look, this level of nutrition and, you know, uh, self-care as it were should be taught in prison it should be encouraged in prisons especially if the goal of prisons is to uh, rehabilitate people but that's not what american prisons do the goal of american prisons is to make money as as most things in america is uh, because america is a hyper capitalist country and because we're a hyper capitalist country the idea is always how can we make a profit out of it? You know, that's what neoliberalism is about. It's just the it's just sort of this liberally lefty wing of of capitalism. But it's all about making money. It's all about turning a buck. Uh, the amount of people I have when they come up to me and they go, oh, man, this is a good idea. You should figure out how to make money off of it. Or I don't know if it's that good of an idea. It should just be available for the people so that the people can uh, people can enjoy it however they want to enjoy it. But you can't you can't help someone become a part of a community if you dehumanize them. And that's what American prisons do. Because when you put profits over recovering someone's humanity, then you just create a, a system of perpetual violence and inequality. And that's what American prisons are doing by choosing that profit. Um, so, you know, again, I hope that people 
take a look at, you know, people like Randall Liberty and, and the New York Times isn't going to talk about this like it's some journalistic thing. It's going to talk about it as if this is just a matter of opinion because the New York Times is is, is neoliberal as fuck. They're connected to the, the Clintons and they run interference on anything that goes against the, those sort of narratives and ideologies. Uh, and the Clintons aren't particularly for prison reform. They're not really for uh, re letting people rediscover their humanity in in the prison system, you know, or or keeping a portion of their humanity in the prison system. They are there for, you know, let's just let them rot in there. Three strikes and you're out, super predators, you know, all that kind of shit. So the New York Times isn't going to report this as if this is some groundbreaking story and this is an example to live by. But that's why you come to people like John Kiriakou, Consortium News, to this channel, because that's what we're going to say. We're going to say, hey, this is something that we should be doing in prisons everywhere. This is something that needs to happen on a nonstop basis because it's important, you know, so. Uh, I'm going to take a look at a few comments as as they've come in. Uh, Johnny says the result uh, of the rule of men. Please go to Real Progressive there. You will find a video series, The New Untouchables, where they show how white collar criminals get away with murder and the need to fight back. Thank you for that tip. Uh, that sounds like a really good series because uh, that's that's kind of what we've what what some of the working class have become uh, are the new untouchables and and how uh, white collar criminals get away with. Uh, I mean, there's no banker in prison after 08, right? Uh, there's no banker in prison after taking trillions of dollars from the government during the middle of this pandemic and not canceling any of the debt. So uh, thank you for that, um, for that suggestion, Johnny. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. You can go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.